Hi, this is a Texas Tiger Digs. I realized that I've used terminology that you might not hear from a lot of detectorists. And, it, and the terminology I use is of my own creation and it's basically because of the way I entered detecting. I'm leery of being suspected of anything. So I've always proceeded with the idea that I wanted to be as innocuous as possible. Uh, I've even called it going stealth in some of my earlier videos. Now, I don't mean stealth like in a stealth bomber, they don't know you're coming type of things. But I mean stealth in the fact that you are going to be carrying a metal detector. And I think what I'm doing is very interesting and I think what I'm doing is is a great hobby. But that's a big red that's a big red this is an unusual guy. This is an unusual guy flashing sign. I didn't say geek. That's that's a special category. I also fall within that, but it's more of a technical category I fall within. And I don't and I don't believe that all of the metal detector community fall in that category. Uh, I'm a little bit more technical oriented than most, and that's not that's not always a plus. Uh, I was one of those people who watched four or five months of a metal detecting video before I, before I even stepped out. So that's how I roll. Anyway, when I get to a new park, I like to go in light. Now when I go in light, I don't mean that I'm, well, there's two things I mean. I'm not going in with my biggest metal detector. I'm not going in with either the Nocta or, and I'm not going in with the Sovereign GT. And I'm not going in with the Xterra 705 with the huge coil. I'm initially probably going in with a smaller uh, uh, detector. Now, I don't know if the people around me are making the distinction on detector size that I'm making. So this just could be a psychological quirk on my part. But let's just say I go in with the Cibola or the Compadre or if I'm going VDI or TDI. Let's just say I'm going in with a gold bug. So I'm going in with that and and I'm going to be swinging that. So, you know, I'm going to be swinging that. They know what I'm, they immediately know what I'm doing. Now, I have never met with anything but curiosity and friendliness from anybody I've ever dealt with. And that really surprised me when I got into this uh, hobby. To this, to date, I have not run into much conflict at all, either with park authorities, uh, no contact with the men in blue, and all the people who've talked to me have been curious about what I'm doing, how much it costs, uh, whether or not I've paid for my uh, detector or not, etc. Anyway, when I first go in, I call in going in light. Now this is a, this is an example of going in light, either one of these. Um, over here, this is very light. I believe that uh, the, uh, the brass probe I've got here is four inches from uh, handle to point. Uh, no, five inches from handle to point. Uh, this little pry bar I got is four inches. And I have this little foldable trial. And this little foldable trial is about four inches in depth. Now, I'm in suburban parks. This is not something that I would say that would even be vaguely useful for urban parks. Uh, let's just say park 60, 70, 80 years old and probably in the case of some of my friends in the East Coast, uh, you could easily run into a park that's 150 years old or that has a heritage of 150 years in various other uses and forms. Like we all know that land is forever. So the, uh, the parks I'm in have been there for four or five billion years if you uh, subscribe to the uh, general age of the earth. but being used as a park, it's only been probably at most 30, 40 years. Uh, so in the suburban parks I'm in, uh, depth is not a major question. So I can actually go in light initially with this, with this collection here. This is also light. They're slightly longer. I think this is about eight inches for my probe. Uh, that's, that's probably about five inches. And this is uh, virtually identical, though slightly slimmer and in a pouch to the one over here. So I could also go in light that way. 
So that that you know either one of those choices, you know, six in one and half a dozen in the other. But this is how I initially go in because I'm going into suburban neighborhoods. So I love the lace digger. It looks like I'm carrying a dagger, and I'm a big guy, so I don't want to go in where I look suspicious initially. And this does look like a dagger. So people who don't understand what we do could miss construe what I'm carrying here so I don't always carry this initially now as, as time goes on I get more familiar with the park I know people know I've been there then this is something I would carry also uh, this is one of the larger Wilcoxes uh, and they call it a, my little, a little excavation tool now this is like this is big now I'm not saying it's threatening like a dagger but it's a shovel and people in these beautiful areas and these parks which tend to have very nice houses around them do not want the idea that somebody's going to be going in and damaging their park i'm not going to damage their park i'm going to cut my plugs i'm going to replace them it's going to look nice and as nice as i possibly can make it and if i do go in and i try to dig and it's crumbly and i can't seem to do plugs i'll leave i won't do damage but so you know that's also going in big now this is sort of in between this this is also Wilcox a smaller one this one is serrated on both edges I think I also want to get the one that's smooth on both edges I probably will do that in the near future so this this could also this could also be conceived as going in light uh, but you know you know but you know that's medium light this is very light and with these trials used correctly you can dig you know moderate sized plugs and replace them so it's not like you're completely giving up on the idea of doing plugs and in the parks I am and a lot of times I'm going to be like one inch or less under the surface where actually I can reach in with this and if need be I can spot with this reach in with this and pop it out and then just fold the dirt back in so that's potential and like I said and if I go out to this park in this scouting I consider this a scouting mode either one of these then I will begin to see how deep my signals are. If I'm out with a uh, a machine that shows me depth, like my gold bug, uh, or I can estimate depth with my uh, with my tesoros, my my analog dial tesoros, I can also estimate depth, and it does show more depth. Then these are definitely going to be in my future. So that's basically how I do it. I go out, I use these, I use these initially because I'm going in and around people in there and to some degrees the people around the area where I am are going to have children they don't need a big man and I'm a big man 250 plus big man walking around there carrying a dagger would draw a lot of attention to himself and like I said I'm not saying this is a dagger but it does look like a dagger to the uninitiated uh, then uh, I'm going to draw attention and from them and I'm going to have to explain to the authorities exactly what I'm doing but if I go in like this I can wear normally these will these will fit into my pants pocket you know it, I'm not going to have a, a big uh, dig pouch so any trash I get up I'm probably going to be throwing away I'm not going to be taking with me I am going to be going to the nearest trash can and the finds I've got are probably going to be pocket size because my finds in a suburban park are always going to be pocket size, more than likely. So that's all I want to do, and that's that's my way of doing it. Now, now you people who are are not 250, who are 150, and look like college professors or uh, or librarians, male or female, then I don't see a purpose in in actually going in light like this. This is for big people. This is for people who have a suspicion that they would not be necessarily welcomed in the area now, now I'm, I gotta be careful with this I'm not saying they would be not welcomed but the potential that people would see you as somebody they need to watch or pay attention to would be escalated by carrying the wrong tool at the wrong time as you become more acclimated in the community and I've got a community a very nice community I mean the houses around the community in the park that I go to very often they have to be in the half million dollars and beyond range probably a million plus and I haven't met nothing but nice people etc 
there, but they've seen me there for periods of weeks and months. So that's that's what I've got. So this is a way of doing things. Like I said, it's, it's all up to you whether you're going in heavy or whether you're going in light. And of course, each one of these would be accompanied by a pinpointer. Uh, pinpointer doesn't look pinpointer doesn't look uh, at all uh, threatening. And uh, then the pinpointer I could put in the right or left pocket and put all of my tools in the other pocket. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. Uh, like I said, it's not a hunt video, but I will be going out, possibly hunting today. The weather's still a little strange around here. So it's cold sometime, it's rainy sometime, and then by the end of the week it's supposed to be beautiful in the 70s. It's really crazy. Anyway, that's all I've got, and this is Texas Tiger Digs. Subscribe. I'm going to be doing mostly hunt videos, but occasionally I will do these little educational videos not necessarily for your education but for mine or just to explain my motivations for some of the weird things I do I'll talk to you later and you have a good day and happy hunting